and welcome back to Rare Delicacies. I'm John, and for today's example, I want to delve into our recent obsession with 80s nostalgia. Not that I'm saying it's a bad thing, it's just a very odd obsession that just came, well, practically out of nowhere. But then again, you think about it, a lot of the filmmakers who are prominently working in Hollywood right now grew up in the 1980s. They grew up on a lot of great stuff that came from that decade. They're trying to resurrect that particular style, the best stuff of it, and trying to create something new out of it. And we have gotten a lot of wonderful things out of it recently. We got Stranger Things, we got Glow. Even certain films like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Thor Ragnarok, have even tried to emulate that style. Turbo Kid, this film sort of wanted to envelop itself in a very odd subgenre of film that popped up in the 1980s. And one can surmise that it may have come from a well, this is interesting, but even they had their weird obsession with Tio Twaki. That's right. They were just as obsessed with the apocalypse as we were. And much like back then, well, they were just as worried about oppression by fascist regimes and also depleted resources and, among other things, materialism at its worst. Well, Turbo Kid also is a film that actually seemed to oddly pay tribute to it. But the thing that's wonderful about it is that it, is that it does it with the utmost conviction. So, we're going to explore that particular film today, and for this, I bring along my good friend, Sam Falco. Hi. Sam Falco, I'm a filmmaker from Orlando and friend of John's. And today no. we're talking about Turbo Kid. As we've seemed to notice that there's this big swell of 80s nostalgia popping up. However, this one was actually ahead of the curve. A little bit, yeah. Just a bit. So, And the thing I kind of laughed about when I saw this the movie, or at least saw the trailer for it, I was like going, I don't know why this movie got in my head, but freaking Solar Babies. Yeah, no, I could see what you're saying with that. I hadn't thought about that before. Well, because yeah. I remember that movie where, you know, all kids on rollerblades apparently overtaking a horrible regime or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> that no, like, that's, uh, that was actually kind of a trope in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, and that's... Kids, and, kids on rollerblades and skateboards. Yeah. And I can tell you now, I can tell you now, this movie is rife with those particular types of tropes. And not just that, but movies like Equalizer 2000 mm -hmm. or... Um, all these other other ones that you could probably you in odds are pretty good was produced by Canon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, <laughs> Canon that, that glorious well of quality entertainment. <laughs> so, uh, what what was your prior knowledge of this film? Uh, this I, I literally just heard of the movie. I saw a trailer online at one point, and to I had I just never had gotten around to watching it. Um, I have seen other movies in this vein like uh, Wolf Cop and things like that. Oh, um, <laughs> Wolf Cop. The the movies that are like at the same time made to be quote-unquote bad movies but also made as like tributes to mm. classic kind of bad movies it's the ones that cross that line where they're like so bad that it's good and it's just fun to watch yeah I, and uh it's it's it to me it looked like a a send-up of all those uh mad max rip-off movies that came out in the oh, 80s after yeah. everybody saw the road warrior and we're like oh we gotta do our we, own all we need is a quarry and uh and a couple of dead things in a yeah. in a desert. We could get all that. And you know. I can't remember the name right now. There's actually this one movie that was literally they got the guy who played Goose in Mad Max. Anthony Edwards. What? Oh no, Goose, Goose, Goose. Goose. The, in, I'm yeah. thinking Top Gun. No, not that Goose. <laughs> the, the Goose from Mad Max. They got Goose from Mad Max, and they literally had a post-apocalyptic movie about pool. Oh. Like playing pool, and they would like cut off their fingers if they lost. But it had nothing to do with the post apocalypse whatsoever. But they're like, well, we got the guy who played Goose. That's all oh. we need, right? When I saw the trailer of this, to me, I was like, going, okay, so it's basically like what Black Dynamite did for seventies black exploitation. Yeah, exactly. This exactly kind of thing. It's sending up a whole genre, not a specific kind, not a specific, not movie. a specific movie, but a, like a whole subgenre of film that just seemed yeah. to grow organically just because needs in the market the yeah 80s was the glory age of action movies basically mm -hmm. anybody with uh, a microscopic budget and a good camera not even that sometimes and a, ca and a casio and a casio <laughs> could could make an action movie yes and uh you know you go out to the desert and shoot oh and some... michael ironside if you can get michael well, ironside you know, michael ironside never hurts they never does well <laughs> He could probably hurt. He you. could probably hurt anybody. He could hurt anyone just by smiling. Michael Ironside is a man who should never smile. No, he shouldn't. I mean, his smile killed Sequest. Moment of silence for Sequest. Moment of silence for Sequest. That's enough of that. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, he is a terrifying presence. I'm looking forward to him. He, he's the villain in this one, right? Oh. My memory serves. No, he's the Yoda figure. Oh, well. No, he's a, the villain. I know. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, well, I, 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 imagine, kudos to them for thinking outside the box. Now. Imagine one day. You know what, Michael Ironside? One day you need to play the Yoda figure. Yeah. Just just for that. You know, you need oh, to... Oh, boy. Yeah. God. With the voice and everything? Yeah. <laughs> well, on. you know what, though? So, they're... they're I have to give it up to Stranger Things, which is another like tribute to genre mm-hmm. stuff, because they actually did kind of subvert the traditions a little bit with '80s stuff, because they had Paul Reiser. Paul Reiser, and he I, the whole time I'm expecting him to turn out to be this like scumbag, yeah. but then he turns out to be the the good guy of the doctor. He turned out oh to be bona fide. Uh, uh, yeah, this, this whole thing is just him making up for being Burke. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing. Too far it's off. his whole role in that movie. Oh, anyway, we're very way yeah, out we're of it. This is the '80s nostalgia. And that's what it does to us. And yeah. this movie was one of the pioneers of the A's nostalgia movement in this day and age. So without further ado, I think we should just jump right in. Let's do it. All right. So, um... Uh, yeah, you you are. Yeah, so he is all these things about the ap- post apocalypse that we've been having. Mad Max, all that. No, no. He, we've learned the best way to survive is by a turbo kid. Yeah. All we need is duct tape and a bicycle helmet. Yeah. And we're set. Yeah, absolutely. Always, always remember your helmet. Okay. So. So, honestly, the thing that I was the most surprised about with this, as I said to you while we were watching it, is that um, this is actually like a real movie. Uh, I thought it was going to be uh, a parody that uh, didn't take anything in it seriously and uh, just sort of like floated along through it. But like, it uh, a lot of silly things happened in it. But oh, immensely it, it, silly. It took its story and characters pretty seriously and played it pretty much straight the whole way through, which is actually pretty much my favorite way of comedy yeah. movie like series or movies doing it. We've seen a lot of films come around recently where they seem to know that the best way to approach that level of humor is to play it straight because let's face it anything that's going to take something so ridiculous so seriously you're going to laugh just because of course in the real world we would never look at this in any shape way or form seriously but no, no so we're laughing that they are yeah but they believe it so it's hilarious to us just the imagery of the the cowboy and turbo kid riding up on the bicycle on with the, the sidecar it's, it's, it's a it's a guy on a bmx bike coming like slowly up the hill <laughs> and it's got the like the the epic casio or, <laughs> or even just the way they're filming it they're filming it that looks like yeah. a, an action movie like you'd see a car chase the way yeah. that's filmed but they're filming it like you would yeah well like you with that but we're and we're taking it seriously because they're on pmx exactly i i actually i remember saying when i forgot i forgot a uh, this is the first time I've watched it in probably over like a couple of years, but mm. here, well, actually, uh, when it first popped up on Netflix, so here I'm going, I'm looking at this going, I forgot, I used to watch Rad. Yeah. I, I forget, BMX was another thing in the 80s. That... Oh, yeah. BM- I was surprised at the lack of skateboards, but they were like sticking with a BMX thing, I guess. Maybe the next one, the sequel, will be skateboards. If there, if there ever will be a sequel, yeah. but you know, and I'm sad that there will be. I don't know if there will be a sequel. I mean, this came out I think two years ago. Yeah, something like that. It would be lovely if there was a, if there was a sequel. Well, you never <laughs> know. Like sometimes they take a couple of years in between, but this could just be a one-off thing, and that's totally fine. It doesn't need to be a franchise. And- exactly. I mean, there. This thing. I mean, with everything else we with between Stranger Things, even with a lot of the things done in the eighties aesthetic, like even Thor Ragnarok or even Gal- Guardians oh, yeah. of the Galaxy. I mean, this is. I don't. I even then. I, I keep after watching this. I'm going. They couldn't even go overboard on their references because this one just seemed to capture everything, encapsulate everything about yeah, the much, 80s. Yeah. This just seemed to be just completely drowning in it. Yeah, it was just it, it, the the essence of the 80s with movies like this is just excess of everything, mm-hmm. excess of style, excess of you know just the the way they design their props, the costumes, the blood, everything. Oh. Everything is just excessive and unnecessary, and I love it. Yeah, you never would have thought. Anything could outdo Kill Bill as far as excess of blood. Yeah. As, as far as... And not... We're talking about just gore level. We see gore like in anything by Eli Roth, but we're talking spraying it's like... cartoonish is Yeah, what it cartoonish is. Yeah. blood and gore. Like stuff you'd see in, a, in an anime. Any kind of wound whatsoever is a, a fire hose spray <laughs> of blood. And, it's, and even a touch of water. You can even see a little bit of water. Little bit, well, the whole theme of the thing is people yeah. have water, so... Maybe I maybe I was in denial and I didn't want to pick up maybe. on that, but <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, no, I uh, I actually I actually ended up really enjoying. It. I thought it was gonna be like like I said, I thought it was gonna be a parody, and you were gonna be, it's gonna be like so bad that it's good, and in, in a way, it is so bad that it's good kind of thing. That- but it it's it's a very honest movie, and that's what I like about tribute stuff yeah. like this. It's not really making fun of the genre. It's making fun of the tropes of the genre yeah. while actually taking the genre seriously and saying, we like this. We're not ashamed of liking it. And it's actually a very fascinating point you just uh, mentioned there because there's another 80s film, that came, 80s tribute film that came out uh, a couple years past, um, Rock of Ages. Mm-hmm. The major problem with that movie was the fact that it was poking fun at the era. Yeah, yeah. It it's, was... It, it's, well, there's a lot of, of pro- there was a lot of problems with that movie, but well, that one, as far as it's being a reflection of the 80s, was spending more time heckling, like, oh, look at that. Yeah, it had, like, this hipster attitude towards it where it was liking it ironically. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like, oh, wasn't this so stupid? But Whereas... Man, it's great. Let me, let me curl my mustache yeah. a little bit. And they're so cool that they can't actually like something. It's that they're, they're too cool, so they decide that this thing is funny, and then... Therefore, it's cool because they like it, not because the thing is cool. Yeah. And people seem to forget the whole point of a tribute is to have affection. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, you're not tributing. You're mocking it. Yeah. The thing, And the great thing about Stranger Things, once again, not mocking there. It's of the time. Mm-hmm. And it just... That one, whereas Turbo Kid is all about a celebration of the excess of cinema. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of that time, Stranger Things is obviously... Just that is actually meant to be a bona fide reflection, just yeah. utilizing the stuff we love from the 80s as a kind of like blueprint absolutely yeah. what they're going because for. there's that's the thing about the 80s like we say oh well the 80s is this or the 80s what or was this or was that but like the 80s had so much variety going on with the kind of stuff that it did and you could capture it in a many different ways and still be completely 100 percent faithful to it anybody can see a thing and immediately say oh well that that was the 80s and i mean they if they're... See a completely different thing they're like oh that was also the 80s i suppose the source of this nostalgia kick does come from the fact that it it was it was, in a fashion, the dawn of many things, particularly on a cultural level, I mean, especially with uh, major Hollywood cinema, because oh, there yeah, was a yeah. lot of event movies coming out sp- consistently, and it all started. It all started Indiana with Jaws. Jones and Star Indiana Wars, Jones. And Jaws really yeah. kicked it off, like you just said. Yeah, Jaws kicked it off, but then going into the eighties, then you had ET, oh, and absolutely. even the movies that didn't do well still just gradually kept getting mileage because that was also the dawn of the home video market. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, so that's where the thing, even though it didn't do well in the theaters, once it came out on video. Not to mention it was a lot it was uh, a lot more people were able to throw stuff at the wall and see what stuck because it wasn't just people who had all the professional film equipment and everything and able to develop them because as you said, videotape. Yeah. So now people could make movies much easier and distribute them much easier and get them to a wider audience. Yeah. You didn't have to go out and find a theater that would show your crappy little ten dollar movie or you could yeah. like, you know, go to a trade show or sell it on VHS or whatever. And it was it was cheap and it was able you were able to get yourself out there that's how people got noticed because i was it's it was sort of the the same mentality as when youtube first got started except that yeah. was an even bigger blow up of the same kind of you know method i mean in a couple of my previous videos i was commenting about how it was kind of getting a little burned out on the 80s nostalgia kick that mm-hmm. we've been going through right now but re-watching this movie again as i have i'm now coming to the realization that we're not in love with the era as a whole we're in love with the advancements that came from that it is debatable whether or not we're, we're trying to get it back or that we're actually finding out what made it work back then to try and get it back i well, mean do you think we've gotten back to that i think we haven't really gotten back to it i think it's a matter of from our perspective now in today's day, not to get like too serious or anything but like in this day and age where we've got a lot of uh, negativity and chaos going around and it's, it's a rough time right now. Yeah, We're looking back at the stuff from the 80s that we really liked, which was very heartfelt and pure and kind of simplistic. You know, there was a line in the sand between, you know, good guys and bad guys. That kind of mentality is something that's sorely needed today. Mm. The 90s and the aughts kind of blurred that line a little bit, that which was... was fine for the time. But, like, I think people really want something that's a little simpler and easier to... I kind of... More palatable. But at the same time... 
we're also jettisoning a lot of the stuff from the 80s that was in and of itself toxic that grew into the stuff mm. in the 90s and the aughts and now here we are that's resulted <laughs> from all the, the, the I, levels of excess with uh, with government, I will, with corporate greed and yeah, stuff like that. I mean, I will say, I mean, I do kind of shudder over the day comes when we start emulating the 90s because I'm like, guys, a lot of bad stuff came out of the it's, 90s, particularly cinema-wise. It's, it's already happening. Uh, it's, it's, but going back to Turbo Kid, yes. uh, I think... a. Uh, I mean, what would you say, like, performance-wise? I mean, Michael Ironside was pretty much reliable. Oh, yeah, of course. Well, Michael Ironside is always a safe bet in your movie. I don't think I've seen a movie with, where I didn't like at least him in it, mm -hmm. if not the movie itself. But Michael Ironside is a joy to watch. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure most of the talent in this movie was was local. Yeah, because I noticed a lot of uh, fake American accents. Uh, mm -hmm. It said it was a joint venture between Canada, Canada and New Zealand. And New to, to, to sum it up... My reaction to it is, like, again, I was surprised that it was actually a really straightforward, like, real attempt at making a movie, and they succeeded for exactly what they wanted to do. It was a lot of fun, it was very, very 80s, and it was very faithful. Uh, I was really impressed by the effects, actually, and yeah. myself being a, a prop builder and a costume maker, this <laughs> that glove is amazing. Yeah. I love that glove. I, I just want to see that glove... Freddy's power glove and Lucas from the Wizard, all like in a big and Ash's hand. Or How about see... the chainsaw hand? That was okay. Big. That's there better. Yeah, there you go. That's better. Which we saw a little bit of that in here. We too. did see a lot the, of that. The, the, there's a lot of prop based references going on. So I guess if you want to learn to survive the apocalypse, I guess Turbo Kid's really the best way to oh, learn. Yeah, he's got a set of rules. A set and of stuff. rules. He got the set of rules like Zombieland. Make sure you stock up on duct tape. It's a cure all for everything. Definitely a cure all. It could even repair your uh, friendship robot. Yeah. So uh, those are things to learn by if you want to learn to survive the apocalypse. Watch Turbo Kid. It's on Netflix right now. So I believe uh, that about wraps it up for us today on Rare Delicacies. In the meantime, I'm John. And I'm Sam Falco. And for more addictive content on Narcotic Casserole, simply like, share subscribe click and thou shalt be served be over here over here maybe or it'll be in the description it'll be there somewhere wherever it is yeah. you'll find it and i just heard a beeping that might be a bomb so we better get the duct tape out better get the good. duct tape out so will we be expecting uh, both you and uh, jackie to be doing uh, turbo kid and apple i at don't any know time soon? no <laughs> oh but come she's on a robot and she's and she's maybe, adorable. She and she's adorable. Yeah. Adorable. You have You are adorable. You have the smile and the giant eyeball. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk her into it. <laughs>